So hi, I'm Jessica Hodgins, and we're standing here in the Motion Capture Lab at Carnegie Mellon. I'm a professor in computer science and robotics here, and I run this lab where we've done a lot of different experiments using Vicon equipment. So what we have right now are a dozen MX40s, and then we just got some T160s. Those are our newest cameras. This is actually our third Vicon setup, so we've been using them very successfully since about 2000 in this lab. With this equipment, we've worked on a large number of different projects. Uh, the one that you see here is a project where we're trying to understand the skin and muscle deformations in the shoulder complex uh, as he moves around. But we've also worked on a lot of other projects over the years, most notably ones in motion graphs where segments of motion capture are glued together and we have transitions between them and also projects in interpolating together segments of motion data so that we can get uh, more generalization out of the motion data than we could just from a specific capture. So perhaps the project that we're best known for wasn't actually a research project so much, but a community service project. And here we captured about six hours of uh, motion capture data and put it all out on the web for people to use. So there have been uh, more than 50 papers published by authors who have nothing to do with our lab using this data. So I think it's had a big impact on the research community. Right now we're trying to update that database by making it specific to particular activities that occur in the kitchen. So we're doing experiments with cutting and cooking and stirring and things like that uh, to look at some tasks for assistive technology for trying to allow elderly to stay in the, their homes for longer. So for this project we're trying to understand how the skin and muscle deforms as he for instance rolls his shoulder around. So here we've moved up the cameras in so we have a smaller workspace capture region in the room but we can get much better data. So we're using a very small set of markers to do this particular capture and as you can see we place the markers very densely uh, on his chest and his shoulder. So for this capture we drew a grid on him uh, and then put markers at the intersections of each of the grid lines. That's because we want to make sure that the markers are roughly uniformly spaced. And then what we're going to do is cluster together groups of markers and figure out how to, from the, from the motion of those clusters, how the skin and muscle should deform in an actual capture. So we've also done another project that used a dense set of markers like this, but in that project we actually put markers over the entire body and then we were able to uh, reconstruct those markers and to figure out the skin and muscle deformations that resulted from that. Uh, the hard part of that project was actually dealing with occlusions. The arms pass in front of the body and then you have a lot of occlusions. And so we built a model for how the markers moved with respect to each other in a particular neighborhood and then use that to reconstruct the markers that were included at some point in time. What we hope to be able to accomplish with projects like this where we're actually measuring the surface of the skin instead of just measuring the skeleton as you do in traditional motion capture uh, is to allow people to create much more realistic animations of figures. So you can either do the skeletal motion capture and then in the skinning process try and put back that level of detail that's lost or you can just capture it and try and use it directly from the system. So when we were trying to clean up this data, we made a first pass in the Vicon software so that we uh, got from that unlabeled trajectories for each marker. Sometimes those trajectories are broken into pieces. And then we used our own software to uh, glue together some of those trajectories and then also to fill in gaps in the trajectories. So in order to fill in the gaps, we would build a model of how the markers around a particular missing marker had moved at other points in the motion and then use that model to be able to reconstruct where the marker likely was at that moment that it was occluded. So we just did a big capture of facial animation data using these new T160 cameras and uh, what we're going to try and use that data for is to understand how we might be able to build better rigs for facial animation. So there we had three or four hundred markers just on the face and we had of course the cameras all moved in. Uh, we hired a number of actors to uh, give us emotionally expressive uh, sentences and then capture their motion while they did that. Hi, my name is Moshe Mahler. I'm an animation designer here at Carnegie Mellon in the Motion Capture Lab. And uh, I've been working here for six years where we've done lots of research and we've also created a few art pieces. And one of the art pieces we created is called Walk and Say, where we implemented a classic uh, 1983 CNC. When you turn the dial and select an animal, you're actually controlling the uh, an animation. So the user not only hears the uh, sound from the toy, but also sees the animation change on the screen. What we did is we had a, an actor come in and portray their interpretation of each one of these animals. And uh, we then took this data and printed it out, used a classic rotoscoping technique to um, get the uh, motion capture data onto a uh, kind of nostalgic crayon drawing and representation of each one of these animals. So the instrumentation of the CNC, we use a rugged rotary potentiometer to help us tell where the dial is pointing. 
And then we have that hooked up to a uh, Arduino, which sends a radio signal to a hidden laptop, which is running a projector. And, and when someone pulls the string, uh, it will change the animation on the screen. Says, 